how do you or do you see a lot of people who kind of act like you're doing some culture vulture shit like even when i uh said that i was doing this content with you in my group chat there's like most of the people fuck with you it was like one person was like i don't know about that dude man he just be white boy going to the hood yada yada like I, how do you take that criticism first thing is how do you think i get these connections mm -hmm. it's these guys are dming me so like i don't have a network around the country of random people like i'll get a guy from philadelphia will message me a guy from miami will message me and then i'll line it up and then as far as the culture vulture thing goes i mean I don't think I'm pretending to be anything that I'm not. I'm not walking in here acting like I'm some big dog, some big gangster. I know exactly who I am. I'm a kind of nerdy, weird white guy who likes to wrestle and do jujitsu and read books and go walk in the woods. So I'm not fronting on anything. And the other thing is like, I think the whole cultural appropriation thing, I see both sides of it, but the stance I kind of see is like, Okay, does that mean if you're not German, do you not get to eat bratwurst? If you're not a Greek, do you not get to run a marathon? Like, where do we want to draw the line? And the reason people come to America is because we have so many interesting flavors going together. I can walk down the street, I can eat Afghani, I can eat Jamaican, and that's why I love this place. So I think if you're purposely ripping off ideas, claiming them as your own, pretending to have a different persona, I think you're a piece of shit. But I think if you're genuine and you're exploring people, like... I'm going to explore the witches. I'm going to explore the guys in Miami that are gangsters. I'm going to go to a Jewish holiday. Like, I'm just trying to get a flavor of a life that's not mine and, and experience it for myself. I feel like you get a pass from a lot of people because you seem like you just have such a good heart overall, you know? And, and like you said, like, ignore, like, you ignoring the beef stuff, I think that probably goes a long way, you know? Also, I think I'm more than fair in the, like, the fact that I'll send... I might do three or four revisions. Like uh, the certified trapper video that we have out. If you see how many blurs are in that video, <laughs> that was a colossal investment of time. But because he's local Milwaukee, I would get it. And then I would drive to his house, show him it. <laughs> eh, 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 not this part, not this part. You know, maybe his boy would watch it. That part, go back home. We'd edit it. So I'm more than happy to make people comfortable with what's coming out. And so I feel like that's another way that makes me stay good anywhere I go. Mm, I like it. Who do you consider the goats on YouTube that you really look at and you're inspired by? I'm assuming Mr. Beast is probably near the front of the line in terms of just people who've taken this YouTube shit as far as it, it could be taken. I admire what he's doing, his style of content. I, I'm not, I don't watch a ton of YouTube. Like what I grew up on was the craziest Vice documentaries. Like mm -hmm. we're going to go watch child labor in a Mexico mine and watch a six-year-old go to a mine. We're going to go to a Russian billionaire. That stuff to me was fascinating. But as far as currently... On YouTube, who's really doing a remarkable job? Um, I am a big podcast guy. So like Theo Vaughn to me is one of the funniest, silliest yeah. guys. If I'm ever feeling down, I'll put on a Theo Vaughn podcast and I'm going to be laughing within the first few minutes. Right. Um, Joe Rogan is a guy that's like revolutionized the podcast space and just um, I really I've learned so much from like the Tim Ferriss, the Joe Rogans, the Lex Friedmans. All these guys have just it's been like a co this shit's on a college education. Mm. I just need to listen to a podcast. I need to go experience stuff hands on, but I'm trying to think of like a YouTuber, YouTube guy. Um, I like, I'll mention from the jujitsu beef and the, I like both of these guys. I like Brandon Buckingham. I like Danny Mullen. I think they're, they're both clever. They're witty. Um, they make me laugh. Um, I like, I like guys that aren't fitting into a box. Like you see so many street interviews that it's like, you see 50 people ask the same question, like, does size matter? <laughs> or like stuff like that. And it's like anyone that is truly like practicing their craft, right. and you can tell like they really care about what they're putting out. Um, I'm cheering for the man on the street stuff is so weird because that has just become such a gigantic genre online on TikTok, on YouTube, whatever. And I actually did it <clears throat> for like basically the first time at the porn convention. Mm -hmm. And that was the weird thing is like, you realize that if, a, well, you can put a lot of effort and time into coming up to, with clever questions, mm -hmm. but sometimes like the deep industry type questions or the questions that are more thoughtful seem like they perform worse when you're doing the man on the street stuff. And yeah. then the stupid shit really does rise to the top. The incentives are fucked on there. There's a, so I, when I grew up, uh, I was listening to a lot of underground rap and there's a guy named Immortal Technique that I used to listen to a lot. And he Legend. has a line that says, when you go platinum, it has nothing to do with luck. It just means that a million people are stupid as fuck. <laughs> and I really like that line because if you look at some of the stuff, the most views, the most streams, the most this, it's not always the best singer, the best performer, the best this or the best that. It's 
the mainstream Kim Kardashian catchy shit that people consume. And there's, I guess there's nothing wrong with it. I don't want, I'm not going to be a snob and say I'm above that kind of taste, but I think the people that I admire innovate in some way. I don't care if you're a man on the street, but make it your own in some way. Mm. And that's how, and th- going back to maybe the, the cultural appropriation thing, like what, what innovation and creation is, is taking one idea and then adding a new twist to it to, to take it to the next level. And that's how we advance. Like no one just starts out with, a, like it's really hard to start off with a completely new concept that no one's ever thought of or ever heard of in their life. But they say, oh, I saw this computer does this. Now I'm going to add this headphone jack. I'm gonna, you, you, you take ideas from different places and you make it better. And that benefits society. Yo, we just hit 400,000 subscribers right here on the Clips channel. So if you want to help us out, click subscribe, get us to 500K. Yeah.